right, now we're going to continue with our media availabilities. We've now been joined by Jensen Button, who's becoming a familiar face here in the NASCAR world. Um, Jensen, thanks for joining us again today. Um, as we kind of, you know, <clears throat> before we go to questions from the media, tell us a little bit about um, your week, what it's looked like, and, and kind of the process of getting here to Indianapolis. Great. Um, well, first of all, good morning, everyone. It's uh, it's a privilege to be here at the Indianapolis uh, track. Um, I've been here a few times before, uh, in F1 actually. Back in 2000 was my first race uh, when I was racing for Williams as a 20-year-old. Uh, and I, I remember, I think I qualified sixth and uh, had a great race in these conditions actually, mixed conditions. Uh, and I've always really enjoyed uh, coming here. The only problem is with that race, the bricks, the start and finish line, they actually turned my car off that year. So it didn't have a positive impact. But um, I'm excited to come back and, uh, and hopefully have a better result than I did here in F1. So, um, yeah, good to be back. I think this is a great venue. I love the idea of having so many different categories racing over one weekend. I think uh, other series can really learn from this, having IndyCar racing today. Um, and, uh, and, and the Cup Series on Sunday, I think it, it works really well as a weekend package for the fans. So I think it's great. Looking forward to watching the IndyCar race and uh, obviously, more importantly, looking forward to getting out on track in the Cup car. All right, we'll now go to media for questions. We'll start with Claire B. Lang and then go to Jordan. Claire B. Lang, Sirius XM NASCAR Radio. I really enjoyed your conversation with Keelan Harvick on the video. And I wonder at kind of, it, you seem so... I, I don't know, you, you really relaxed him and he had really an in-depth conversation with you. When you take yourself back to his age and he was looking at his notes and he was a little bit nervous and then he warmed up, what do you think of him and, and what did you get out of that conversation? Uh, he's, he's a very grown up 11 year old. Uh, you know, he, he obviously loves his racing. Um, it's funny when you look back because I think he struggles to maybe listen to his dad you know, his dad has got so much information to give. He's raced for years, decades in the sport. But when you're that close to someone, some, sometimes it doesn't work. It's like you shouldn't teach your kids how to drive on the road because you're just going to cause arguments. So I think maybe he's a little bit close, and that's why it causes some uh, disruption. But, you know, I, I basically just said, trust me. You know, your, your dad is the person that knows best. I remember learning from my dad as a young kid, and... You regret it if you don't take his information on board, uh, at least listen to his comments. So um, it was it was it was a really nice time with him. You know, he's got a long career ahead of him, lots of ups, lots of downs, and uh, it was actually pretty emotional as well because you know talking about his father being supportive and my father was always very supportive through my my career, and he's the reason why I'm st sat here now. So um, yes, uh, he's he's got good times in front of him and. I have kids as well, so I think that, that also made it a little bit emotional for me talking to him about his career and, and where he wants to go. I think he said cool about 20 times when you were cool talking. He loved it. <laughs> and last thing, qualifying. How do you look at qualifying in practice today? Well, I'm in Group A uh, once again. Um, you guys have a very unusual qualifying system where it's the quickest lap time is where you end up on the grid when you have two groups, whereas it should be A on one side of the grid, B on the other side. Uh, and I think I said this in, uh, in Chicago as well, but it makes it very difficult when the circuit's like this because if the circuit's drying through qualifying and you're in Group A and you do a great job and you qualify sixth, you're basically going to end up 30th on the grid if the circuit's improving. So it just means you've got to get it done in qualifying. You've got to be top five so you go into the shootout. Um, these conditions are tricky because they're always changing, which makes it fun for me. I love these kind of conditions. I'm pretty good at adapting in cars that I know, um, and I'm pretty, I think I'm, I'm up, you know, I'm, I've got to grips with the cup car now, so I have no excuses. So I, I am really looking forward to this. It's nice to see it's a bit brighter out there, um, and uh, I just can't wait to get out on track. You know, it's been many years since I drove here. The circuit's also very different to when I drove here in F1. Um, so yeah, I need to get some laps in, and we only, we've only got 20 minutes, so it's not a lot. All right, Jordan. Jordan Bianca, The Athletic, you mentioned how you, you like this kind of super weekend with the IndyCar, NASCAR doubleheader. Uh, what, what do you like about it, and, and what can other series take away from this and, and, and apply? Uh, well, the fans just get more bang for their buck, I guess. You know, um, watching two 
great series, and then you have the, obviously the feeder series, the junior series, um, IndyCar next, and, uh, and obviously Xfinity series. So it's a lot of racing over a race weekend, uh, and it's good to see. You know, I would love to see other categories doing the same thing. You know, seeing a, a NASCAR race on, a, on an F1 weekend, for example, I think it just brings in a different fan base. Um, and why not? You know, I think the weekends need to be busier. Race weekends need to be busier for the fans. There's quite a lot of downtime always. So uh, I think it's, yeah, it's really cool. It's a great idea. All right, we'll come up to Bruce. Then we'll go back to Claire, Pat, and have an extra one over here. Go Jensen, ahead. what do you see as the biggest changes between this road course and the road course that Formula One competed at here up to 2007? Yeah, so we, after turn... After turn four, you have the little chicane onto the back straight. We had a sharp right turn, then a sharp left turn, and then a sharp right turn. So it's it's opened it up a little bit. It's a bit faster there. Um, but then the end of the lap where we had the banking and we had the issues with the banking, they've put in the, the two corners. And I kind of wish they kept that banking corner for NASCAR and for IndyCar because I think it would it's a bit more of a spectacle, I guess. But, you know, it gives us another overtaking opportunity into that third to last corner. So... It, it does, they've just changed the, the dynamics and the, the, the idea around the circuit, but it looks like a good circuit to race on. You know, I watched the race last year, uh, the cup race, and there's quite a bit of overtaking. Um, turn one is obviously very difficult, heavy braking, but there's a couple of places around this track that you can line someone up from three corners back and make the move. So uh, I think it's a good race track. And when Juan Pablo Montoya came from Formula One to compete in NASCAR, he really liked the aspect of just getting out there and racing and having fun and not getting sucked into politics like can happen so often in F1. Have you experienced just really some of that cool aspect of just getting out there and racing? I still think there's politics in NASCAR. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, for me, there isn't. You know, for me, it is get out there and, and go racing. And, you know, I, I need to say a massive thank you to Mobile One for, for giving me this opportunity to do three races in Cup this year. I never, I never expected that. So it's... Um, it's uh, it's been very enjoyable. Um, I hope this race is better than the last two. Um, qualifying went well in Chicago, but a, a bit of a messy race. So, yes, looking forward to it. And uh, since I left F1, I've done loads of fun things, and this is definitely up there with the, the best or the most fun I've had in a race car. All right, Lee, go ahead. <clears throat> Thank you. Lee Spencer, Catch Friends. Um, Claire mentioned Kevin Harvick, and when we talked to him at Richmond, he mentioned how Keelan had to learn how to do restarts and come off the grid um, against the European children who were far ahead. And he said if the kids here were there, they'd get run over. Do you notice a difference in getting launches on, you know, starts and restarts here with your American counterparts? Uh, in, in NASCAR, it's very different. In, in NASCAR, I, I feel that it's so competitive um, on restarts. They're, they're way more on it than any other racing series I've raced in. Um, but in, in karting, racing in Italy is the best place to race. And uh, I know Keelan's done some racing there. Uh, and I think it was a bit of a shock initially, but then he became very competitive there. And that's the best place to be. That's the best place to learn your racecraft. And also you're racing against the best guys in the world because everybody ends up going to Italy to race karts. Um, but when you get higher up in categories, as I said, the Cup Series for me, from lap one to the last lap, they are on it every single lap. There's no, there's no rest. You cannot breathe in a race in uh, the Cup Series. So it's impressive. It really is. And uh, I was shocked when I did my first race in Austin. All right, go ahead. Just when it comes to being competitive in this series, for you, it's going to be your third start. Where do you feel like you as a driver need to improve upon the most? It's uh, a good question. Um, I think in terms of one lap pace, I can pretty much get the best out of the car. Um, I think that's something I can do. The race is just a different situation. You know, it's, it's uh, the, the pit stops obviously are very different to what I'm used to. I've got better at them, but still, you know, you lose half a second in the pits and it's, it's kind of, it's a couple of places. It's, uh, it's very, very competitive. These guys are doing pit stops every weekend. Quite a, quite a few times, getting used to not having a speed limiter. So that's the big thing. I think 
Probably the only thing in qualifying that I could improve is one lap pace, getting out and getting the tyres working for lap one. Um, I know that Shane, even though he won the race in the Chicago, that's something that he found difficult as well. You know, the, the cup guys are just so good at getting the tyres working immediately and trusting in the car, whereas it takes us a little bit longer to really trust in what the tyre can do. And sometimes you don't have that time. You can't wait for lap two on the tyres because they've dropped off already. So that's, that's the only area I, I need to improve for, for this weekend. All right, I know we had a question. Can you raise your hand, please? Did you have a question? Oh, I'm sorry, okay. Any additional questions for Jensen? Oh, we'll come up front and close with Nate. Uh, Nate Ryan, NBC Sports. Jensen, there was a lot of uh, discussion about SBG at Chicago and his heel-toe technique. I'm just curious, like, have you used that all, or did you think about maybe trying it based on the success he had? Or um, I, I wouldn't put his success down to his heel and towing. I think he's just, he's an immense talent, but also street circuits are just his thing. You know, he races on a street circuit every other weekend, basically. So um, I think that's just his, his strength. Um, and uh, it was new to everyone, and he's very quick at learning that type of circuit. So... No, heel and towing is definitely an art. And I think when you look at kids growing up now, they're never going to learn that because all cars these days normally have a paddle shift steer it on the steering wheel. You use the clutch maybe to pull away and that's it. So it's an art that I think everyone should learn. Um, the problem is for me, I haven't heel and, heeled and towed since 1999. So nothing I race in use heel and toe apart from when I race in at Goodwood in the classic cars. So for me to go and jump in and ride for a break, it would feel very strange because I just don't have the power in that leg to, to hit the pedal as hard as you need to. All right, any final questions? All right, Jensen, thanks for spending time with us. Thank we wish you, you the best of luck this weekend. Enjoy the weekend.